Hey folks, welcome back to another video. You join me no longer in sunny Spain, but in a slightly gray Wales. Still absolutely lovely out there. There's a big bank of cloud rolling in over the Carnedi, which is catching my eye behind the camera. Not sure if the boy was in shot then. He's looking a bit grumpy. We're in 10 day isolation, having uh, traveled um, from abroad. The rules now are you have to have a, some COVID tests plus 10 days isolation at home. Thankfully not in a hotel because of where we came from. He's got a dog walker though, so don't worry about him. He's still getting his daily exercise. It's me that's going a bit stir crazy in home, especially when it's so dry outside. It'd be nice to be out bouldering and stuff, um, but uh, absolutely well worth it and happy to play by the rules, of course. Um, while I was away or when I returned, I got sent this uh, absolutely uh, lovely coffee from Carve Coffee Roasters. Really nice coffee this is. Uh, so I was really grateful for them to send that to me. Got a couple of bags of that. What I'm also grateful for is they uh, sent us a discount code to pass on to you guys, which is JB Mountain 15. So I'm really grateful for that. Check them out because it's coffee that I've bought in the past and I really like it. Uh, so as well, if you're into your coffee, check them out for sure. It is a coffee kind of video where it's going to be a bit of a chatty one because uh, as I said I'm not allowed out at the moment uh, so I'm doing stuff indoors and I'm kind of I'm not too keen on getting back onto Sling Mountain I'd rather just wait a few more days and do those kind of videos out at the crag because it's, it's a bit more realistic and stuff so hang fire and we'll be back outdoors in no time at all. Today's video is how many pairs of rock shoes do I need which could equally be how many pairs of rock shoes do you need? I've got 17 pairs of rock shoes down here, which is a little bit excessive. I'm not sure anyone really needs 17 pairs, but I'll go into why I've got that many. I'm going to thin them out on this video a bit as well. It comes down to really what types of climbing you do, I guess. Uh, and I do sort of most types of climbing, um, of rock climbing. So bouldering, uh, trad and sport. Probably sport's my main focus, but... Um, that kind of dictates what how many shoes you need. If you only do one type, you get away with less um, climbing. And to add into that, I do a lot of indoor climbing as well for training purposes for myself. But you know, there's a lot of different disciplines there, isn't there? So there isn't really one shoe that will do it all. Some people will tell you, oh, you just buy the cheapest pair you can get that fits you. Everyone will agree, uh, will agree that the shoe should fit you. But say, buy the cheapest pair you can that fits you and that'll be fine. I've climbed this grade, that grade, all in this 35 quid pair from Decathlon. And then when you see them climbing, they happen to be wearing a Scarpa Instinct or something that's a really nice rock shoe. Fit is key, right? I've done another video on choosing rock shoes. So uh, all the stuff here mostly is 510 or unparalleled plus a random pair down there because it fits me and that's key. So uh, just because I'm saying these brands doesn't mean it's the particular brand for you. Let's break it down then firstly. So um, bouldering, let's start at that not for any particular reason other than I only really have one pair of specific shoe for bouldering, right? Because I've got some that will cross over, of course. For me, a bouldering shoe wants to be dead sticky. It doesn't need to be supportive. I want it to be quite aggressive though in terms of a bit of downturn because uh, most of my bouldering tends to be a bit on the steeper side. I'll come on to a sort of stiffer downturn shoes in a minute, but bouldering you've only got them on for like 10 12 moves something depends on the problem obviously but not loads of moves so i don't need that support in my foot that i would need on a long 40 meter sport pitch for example so something like the 510 teams fit me really well dead sticky and that inspires confidence and footwork confidence is just key to climbing well so it really does open stuff up to you so for bouldering that's what i wear 510 teams i'll also use my sports shoes sometimes as well Trad climbing next, because that, that's my background, that's how I got into climbing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I've got a big sweeping selection here of a, a sort of typical trad shoes, and some of these are going to get thrown because they're ancient and they've sat in my loft for ages. Virtually flat, they're old, so they've gone a bit of upturn, if anything, but they would have been flat once upon a time. After they'd been worn a bit, these greens, they went dead soft, dead bendy, dead sticky so think grit stone for example those slopey uh, ledges uh, you know edges that are, you know not much of an edge on them they're slopers you put this on there almost guaranteed to stick flipping brilliant they are dead soft though so I put it on, on a longer route and I've just found my feet get tired and if I want to use some edges like on the slate up there 
I want something more akin to these whites where they're still flat, slightly more aggressive heel, although those are quite aggressive to be fair as well. So they ram your toes into the front. And when you put it on that edge, they stay on that edge. They're still really sticky, but not quite as smeary as them. As shoes age, so they go through, sort of have different strengths and weaknesses, but as a stiff shoe on the edge, it's gonna stay there. Loads of support, brilliant, I love them. Some sort of all-rounders here, these, these things used to weigh for work loads. They're so heavy, they've got like uh, foam inserts and stuff, so they were dead comfy. They're just not comfy anymore, uh, even though there is some rubber left on them. And then these, these weren't the actual pair, but this was the first proper rock shoe I had that um, sort of helped make a difference. Before this, I had other brands that just didn't really fit me very well, and they were those cheaper types. As soon as I bought a pair of these, they just inspired so much confidence that I, that straight away, the day I bought these, it was at Hollyhead Mountain, my first climb. I can't remember what route I warmed up on, but then I did Breaking the Barrier, which is E1, and uh, it was my first E1 as well. It was so much to do with these shoes because I, I put them on, they were nice and snug, they fitted well, plus I could sort of feel everything and they were dead sticky and just transformed my climbing, it really did. So I am a massive believer in getting good rock shoes that fit you, of course, and they would just uh, have such a positive effect on your whole movement of climbing. And the movement is just fundamental. Oh yeah, forget pulling hard and stuff. If you can't move well, you can't climb well to your, your potential anyway. So let's just get those bouldering ones out of the way. I think sadly they're all a bit dead to me through not just sole wearing out but shoes bag out or bits rip off them and stuff like that. So they've gone out of the way so what do I wear for trad these days? Well a lot of the time these whites they're the same as those whites just newer and I have a brand new pair in a box there um, because they don't make them any port them more so I stockpiled a couple of pairs and that's my last remaining one. Flat right stiff a general all-rounder, these are great for work, They're the same as those other brown pair, flipping love them, medium stiffness, dead comfortable, so for a work pair or just cruisy trad, I love those, I saw someone in Chile climb an 8A, it wasn't even a dry 8A, it was wet in places, one I'd done before, they wore them, people have done so many hard routes in those back in the day, they've probably just been a bit superseded for really hard stuff, but they're still dead comfy, I love them for work. Um, Anything else for trad? Yes, well, what I end up doing is I end up wearing something like an old pair of high angles, of which I've got four pairs here. And I wear ones, I'm just trying to find for the sake of uh, being complete. Uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, just making sure they're a matching pair. Once a pair of my sport shoes has gone a bit more baggy, lost some of their downturn, but not all of it, still got some stiffness, then I'll put it into the trad pile. So something like these have got a bit of life left in them. Uh, they're not quite as stiff as the whites, they're not quite as soft as those. They were as downturned as those once upon a time, but they've lost some through age. They sit somewhere in the middle, so I really like these as a good all-rounder because they fit me so well, even though they're downturned. They're just, I find them so comfortable, so I'd probably keep those as well. All the other ones, all these other worn high angles that are worn but not completely knackered, they're gonna go in the training pile, so I will keep those, but they'll be for up on my board upstairs or going down to the beacon, those kind of things. Before I come on to what I'm going to keep for sport, I've got these pairs of shoes. Uh, and both of these pairs of shoes here, I broke the cardinal rule of rock shoe buying. I didn't try them on first. The high angles, these are a newer version of these. They changed them, the heel completely changed, and it's awful, it just doesn't fit me at all now. So the shoe from there to there, perfect for me. There to there, terrible. So I just can't really wear them, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with them. I can't throw them away, because they're like brand new and, and well, um, you know, they've got loads of use for someone in them. So maybe I'll sell them, maybe I'll give them away, I'm not quite sure yet, uh, size 11. Um, and these things that I reviewed the other day, um, the, the Dragons, I didn't try them on. They do fit me, and they fit me quite well actually. They're just not what I wanted them to be, old 510 Dragons with this really aggressive soft shoe, a bit like those really. Um, but they just, they're just not that, they're sort of almost flat. The heel is just not aggressive, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna use them for. What well, they could be something comfy, like uh, the sort of the comfy trad pile, but I'm not sure they are as comfortable as those. Nah, I'm, I'm still undecided. They're in the, the pile I'm not getting rid of, but I'm not sure what to use them for. Something I took to Spain with me, right, are these unparalleled TN Pros. So the same fit as the high angles, but dead stiff. These things are so stiff, they're stiff like the whites are, but they've got a downturn. So if I want to climb something that's steeper, that's really sort of edgy though, these things would be flipping great. So 
I've said that's sort of tradish. That's my bouldering pile. That's the rubbish pile. That's the undecided what to do with them pile. For sport, these things are great. Uh, I haven't quite uh, sort of broken them in yet, so I'm not completely sold on them like I was with the old high angles. I think they'll loosen up a little bit. It's helped me decide what I want in a rock shoe, so although they might not be my perfect rock shoe, it has helped me work out what I want from it. So there's positives to this as well. But what has arrived in the post this morning is something different, uh, just to show the box. It's a La Sportiva box. Since about the year 2000, I have only worn 510, and then last year trying these unparalleled things, which are just uh, copies of 510, basically, by old 510 employees. So I've been completely uh, sold on the 510 stuff to the point where I haven't even tried on other shoes. I just bought 510 stuff because I knew they'd fit me. I knew I'd love them. And then 510, years ago they were bought by Adidas, but it seems to be this last year or so that things have really changed in their shoe design and shoe fit and everything, which is why those things are no longer for me, probably. So it made me think, right, well, I'll try the unparalleled because that's the same as the old stuff, great. But I don't really have any kind of, um, you know, you buy into a brand, don't you, and you start to love the brand sometimes. But I don't really have that for unparalleled just because they're a newer company. So I thought now's the time to try some Sportiva shoes. These Sportiva uh, solutions, I should have tried on other shoes years ago. If I'm making a point here about trying on as many rock shoes as possible, I'm just making my own point by saying I should have done as well. I got into that rut of just sticking with the same thing. I bought these after some research. So many people wear them in Spain for sport climbing. They're really good for bouldering as well, apparently. Uh, so I started thinking, why is everyone wearing those? Uh, you know, different countries just tend to prefer different brands. But I'm doing some research. There's a lot of good things about them. I spent uh, a bit of time in Margalef this year, which is all about climbing on pockets. And these are really pointy, so they sit into the pockets well. And that's only good, obviously, it matches your uh, sh foot uh, shape. And uh, you know, I'll come on to that in a minute. So they're pointy, medium stiffness, so not as stiff as those. Something probably fractionally less than the high angle, but certainly stiffer than those. And they're just really comfortable. So I bought them in a size 43 and a half because that's what uh, Banana Fingers website told me to, even though I take 11 in most other rock shoes. So I, that was a bit weird, but they fit perfectly. When I put them on this morning, they came in the post this morning, I was fully accepting that I might have to send them back because at the moment with COVID, you know, it's difficult, if not impossible, to try rock shoes on. So I thought, well, I'll try it, see what happens. If I send them back, I send them back. Ah, oh, they're just perfect. It's made me realise that maybe... I should have tried something different on sooner because although I'm happy with the fit of all these, they're not quite as glove-like as these things. These are another level for sure they are. Uh, for example, they've got a sort of an indent there so you lose out the dead space that you have sort of under your toes on a downturn shoe like that. Actually, that sucks it up so you get a bit more feel there. The heel is pretty much perfect for me. There is perfect for me. Whereas these TM Pro and high angles are always a little bit baggy across there, but not that made a difference until they stretched a bit. This thing, again, is just like a glove. So I'm really excited to take this out onto the crag or onto some boulders and stuff uh, when I'm allowed out again. So I'm going to keep those because they're really good for that sort of really edgy stuff. I'm hoping these will be perhaps... <laughs> Probably similar stickiness, but a bit softer, so they'll sort of mould into the into the hold a little bit, I guess. Different um, kind of brand of rubber or uh, Vibram rather than the 510 unparalleled own stuff. So maybe you'll see me wearing more more uh, Sportivas in the future because I've resisted a long time, but I flipping love them. These things that are in here, they're just uh, other um, just newer models, uh, you know, versions of these shoes. So I'm going to keep them, uh, and they will have their use. But I'm really excited to try these uh, solutions out. So what am I left with? I'm left with getting rid of some pairs. That's good because it saves me some space in the house. I'm left with a couple of pairs I'm unsure what to do with. Not because they're bad shoes, they just don't really work for me. My training pairs and then these ones. So bouldering, work trad and easier trad as well. Slightly harder trad that I want a slightly downturn shoe. Or the, the slaty style trad or slaty sport as well. The sort of edgy sport stuff where you want the shoes to real just be stiff on an edge, and then these kind of uh, maybe a, almost going to call them all rounders in that they're a bit softer but still quite stiff. 
but I'm looking forward already to next year getting to Marg left and some pockets and putting those points in the toes. I'm going to try not to wear these too much because uh, I just want to save them for when I really need them or really want them rather. So how many pairs of rock shoes do you need? One, two, three, four, five, six, plus a pair. You don't need all those pairs, but plus a pair for training. Seven pairs? Is that fair? Let me know in the comments below how many you've got and stuff like that. Plus your stockpile of ones that you haven't worn yet as well. I hope that's wasted some time on your lockdown. It's not too long till we can get out a bit more easily and stuff. Um, I believe uh, Wales is a little bit behind England, but shouldn't be too much longer. So I hope you're uh, managing to alleviate the boredom and whether that's training, reading, watching YouTube, painting the house, whatever it might be. Uh, you have my sympathy, especially now I'm locked down for 10 days. I've feel very lucky to have been in Spain for so long with pretty much a complete freedom relatively. If you've got any questions at all, fire away. As always, happy to answer as best I can, you know that. Click the like button, smash the subscribe button, find us on Insta, find us on Facebook, check out Carve Coffee and use that discount code. All of these things I'm massively appreciative for. I know I say it every time, but I'm going to keep saying it because I keep meaning it. Thanks very much for watching again. More videos coming up very soon.